Yeah. Okay, at home with a poet. All right. Got Bart and Rick here beside me on the couch, and everybody is looking for new ideas, and nobody is offering anything of substance. So, here we are. One, two, three, four, and finish with a poem. Ideas. First one. For a healthy America, take the crime out of drugs. Here's number one. We'll come back to that. Number two. On the abortion issue, we have pro-choice and pro-life. Forget about that. How about pro-birth? All right, there's number two. We'll come back to that. Number three, a living wage. That is the economic solution to the market, to having a free market. We got a poem about that later, okay? Uh, about a market free of oppression. Everyone getting their daily bread would be a revolution. Is that the solution, or just evolution of justice, peace, joy? Real forces, immeasurable by superconductors, trying to explain the universe. Okay, there's a fragment from that poem, Babel. All right, so there's the living wage, and we're going to be dealing with that in the context of entrepreneurial capitalism, which takes into account the common good. So we're dealing with philosophy and theology and meritocracy, and that leads us into the story which holds all of these ideas together, the glue that binds, all right? And that's the Good Samaritan story. And that's a story about, we'll say, a Palestinian stopping to help a Jewish person who was mugged on the side of the road when the other Jewish folks, the rabbi and the professor of theology, passed on by, okay? One of them, the enemy, all right? That applies everywhere, universally. Black, white, brown, yellow, red. Short poem on that, Demonos American version. Some good black and white some rotten white and black, and everything in between, their legs is the same. There we go, human sexuality. So we're getting to another idea that's involved in this one, which is on gay rights, the gay question, as it's called, the Sweeney gay rights, civil rights, bill of rights, okay? That's the Good Samaritan story. So for people to deny that a gay person can be a Good Samaritan is to really be ignorant of Christ and the road of life. Okay, real life experience. Been there. So those are the uh, main ideas introduced. And to go back to the uh, first idea now, we're going to get the response from Rick, my old buddy here on the couch. And I'm going to have a you know, a pope in my um, a puff in my pipe, and that has to do with what we put in our pipe and smoke is our business. Now put that in your pipes and smoke that. Go ahead. What do you think, Rick, of that whole drug question? They'll take the crime out of drugs for a healthy America. I agree. You take the crime out. Of, I mean, look at the prison system. It's it's, it's, it's like exponentially multiplied over the past twenty years. Because of, primarily because of drugs, we get busted for coke or, or pie. You know, the other stuff, well, it's up in the air. But I mean, if you if you make it less of a crime to have this stuff, the price is going to go down. It's not going to be so risky, and eventually, you know, it's another source of revenue for the government. They, they tax everything else. Well, here's the thing about the drug question. All right, which is so mind blowing. But it has to do with the, what's the Stockholm uh, syndrome, which is identifying with the oppressor. Mm -hmm. Look at the disproportionate number of African Americans and Latin Americans in the prisons, mm -hmm. right? 
And these laws are Jim Crow laws. I mean, marijuana was made illegal at, by the request and at the in, insistence, you know, all the political dirty tricks going, okay, <coughs> from big uh, landowners in the Southwest during Depression days, they wanted to get rid of the Mexicans. Mm -hmm. That was the main driving force, the cheap labor, the plentiful cheap labor had now become a burden because of the uh, depression. It was the depression mentality and it was out and out racism. And the people who were the victimized today as a result of those laws, that's why, who was that guy? Woody Harrelson from Cheers, right, among mm -hmm. other stories. He actually invited the media and planted a seed. And there was a state trooper standing right next to him, and as soon as that seed, as soon as he put it in the ground and tamped down the earth with a shovel, he was arrested. Mm. I mean, we're arresting farmers. To bring the idea home, check it out. Why don't we arrest all the people who eat potatoes? Mm. All right, that way we can get rid of all the damn foreigners. Mm. It's those potato eaters that are the problem, I'm telling you. You know, we get them because you know what they do with those potatoes. They'll make drink out of it, put sheen, and go crazy, and there'll be no control on them. They want to take over the world, they will. That's the mentality, you see. That is the absurdity of the belief system behind these drug so-called signs that they have, which only applies within the boundaries of America. You know, signs like Einstein's... Uh, you know, his science only applied in the rest of the world, or only applied in America, it didn't cross borders. I mean, this is how we can run these folks out. It's the Scopes monkey trial all over again. You know, we're denying scholarship. Scholarship was denied. Anybody who wants to check the, the stories out, just go to history.com. And uh, easy to do the research, you know, on the so-called drug wars. And drug prohibition is what it is. We try prohibition. Look at the amount of money that's being wasted. Mm -hmm. Look at the violence we have. Look at what's going on in California. California's getting ready to go some tre serious changes. And they can look at all the crime, the jails, <coughs> everything that could be changed, the whole culture. But you know the biggest thing about it, what's going on in Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. What kind of a trade is going on there? Uh, opium. Right. So... Who's who's uh, growing the opium? And Jennings is the number one cash crop. Cash crop. And they're, it's supposed to be impacified, right? They're mm -hmm. supposed to be. They've been fighting, trying to eradicate their crop. Have they succeeded? Well, they're subsidized by the U.S. government. Well, I don't know if it's subsidized by the U.S. government. It might end up end up being the, indirectly through funds through corruption. But I don't think there's any conspiracy. Well, like, like CIA, something like that. It's, it's a way of maintaining control. Bill funds. Uh, I think the CIA is more interested in acting uh, in protecting American interests, and it calls it democracy, but in reality they're protecting the American empire. And they don't even mm -hmm. understand, most of them, that what we have is a form of government, is a constitutional democratic republic. That is the proper naming of our form of government. And it's too bad that we don't live up to those principles, but every day is a struggle. We have a judicial system. That is what America is about. People are talking about Gitmo. Why not give them a trial? Where is the evidence? Give them a fair trial. They can be locked up if they're a danger. What about the ones who are innocent? How many movies do we have about people who are innocent and they... I mean, my God, it cries out to heaven, the injustice of it. Here we are putting people in jail for crimes, and we're endangering ourselves. We're providing the money to the warlords in Afghanistan and in Pakistan to buy the weapons, to buy the materials, to make weapons. One of the, the arguments being used, good morning, Joe. Oh, Joe, man, you are so sad, so lame with this argument. You're buying in like O'Reilly and all that and Bush, and it's like, here's the argument you're using, Rick. We're safe for now. They kept us safe. People could make the very same argument about Bill Clinton from 93, the first World Trade bombing. I think it was 93, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, 2001, 9-11. The Clintonites could be going out up until, you know, the day before 9-11.